Hey, everybody, and welcome to episode number 96 of the Chris Rose Rotation, a production of John Boy Media, and today presented to you by our friends over at SeatGeek. I am Chris Rose, joined by a couple of my John Boy Media brothers as we are out at the compound in Phoenix, Arizona. A pair of former relievers, Jerry Blevins, Pete Moylan combined. Did you guys get in 25 years? How many did you get in? Uh, nine years over 13 seasons. I had 10 years over 13 seasons. Just fucking make it easy for everybody. You can't well, it's have a weird question. Like, it is a weird it's question. It's not a weird question. There's service time, and then there's how many years did you oh, get in? Which because base, the baseball people stuff. talk about service time, and then over, like, I don't say I played 13 years because I didn't. I played in 13 Correct. seasons. Correct. I didn't get 10 years service time, which is the benchmark a lot of guys like to get to. So I announced that I got just over nine years plus, but I had to fight through 13 seasons. It's still very confusing for me. I got to be honest. I feel like I'm doing uh, negotiations between the MLBPA and the owners again. It's deep right now. I appreciate you guys showing up. Um, I, I asked you to because just to clarify, we didn't show up. We were already here. Right. Okay. Well, you showed up in this room. You could have been lounging by the pool. But that's my bedroom right there. I was lounging right there. <laughs> I showed up. I was here for you, Chris. <laughs> for people that have been following the content house over the last several days, it's been a very interesting dynamic. Uh, Jerry and I share a Jack and Jill bathroom, but we each have our own rooms. And then Moylan has been sharing a room with Ploof all week, like you're back in single-A ball or something. How has that gone? Great. We lifted the – we're actually in queen bunks, <laughs> so that sets the table even more. And we had to lift the bunk off the top because – the first night, Ploof got up there and it felt like I was going to see, do that scene from Step Brothers where they... The, the, I, was, I, was, I was in fear for the first 45 minutes that I was in bed. Every time he moved, the thing would wobble just a little bit. So uh, we put that on the bed and that sort of alleviated that. And I sleep with a noise machine, so he could have been doing whatever he wanted in there. He could have been banging pots and pans and I wouldn't have known. You sleep with a sound machine? I do, every Me night. Me too. You, you as well? You can't hear mine? No, I hear you snoring. Oh, okay, that's... <laughs> It's, you I, don't I, hear you I gotta turn you it up. Sound machine. I gotta turn the sound machine. Seriously, up right. I, I think twice uh, in the time that we've stayed here, mm -hmm. I have gone and shut your door to the bathroom. Got it. Because mine has had like a crack open, and so I go in there and I make your your. Did you know that you're an yes avid snorer? Yes, it's the uh, especially when I have uh, allergies that are here. Uh huh. It crushes my like nasal passages, and yeah. I cannot breathe. See, I'm a shitty sleeper. I've always been a, a terrible, terrible sleeper. I love my dad dearly. I miss him every day. He's been gone almost a decade. But I got his fucked up sleeping genes. So mm -hmm. I don't know what I do. Do you guys think that the the sleep machine would be beneficial? I, I, I live by it. Do you feel that something wakes you up every night? Or do you just not get into any kind of deep yes, sleep? Yes, general worry. Just overall. Just okay. worried about life. Well, we're talking about um, two different things. I think yeah. if you, once you fall asleep, if you want nothing to wake you up, the yes. noise machine is it. If you want help falling asleep, I can probably help you with that too. No, I can fall <laughs> 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 you're like dr jerry bus you're the king of pharmaceuticals yeah whatever you need i like it yeah i like it um part of the reason i wanted to have you guys on is i wanted to talk to you about the bullpen life mm. yeah oh, quite the life yeah we go. Uh huh. um you guys i imagine wanted to be starting pitchers nope what i did well that's two different answers then. yeah like when i when i came up in the world i'm pretending to be a big leaguer in my backyard. I don't want to be a middle reliever. You know, I want to be I want to be Randy Johnson. I'm not trying I don't even know my own guys names, you know what I mean? I always dreamt of being the 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 starting pitcher. That's a fair point. When I first signed, I was starting when I was 17, 18 with the Twins organization, but the second go around, I knew what my role was going to be. Oh yeah. The minute I got over here, I was going to be a reliever. So I always wanted to be a reliever. In fact, they they immediately changed everything about my mechanics the minute I got to camp as a brave that first day. It was I had a big spinning wind up, completely not repeatable at all, and would was struggled to throw strikes. So they just cut that out immediately. So that I knew I was going to be a bullpen guy from the minute I got there. And they saw me when I first got drafted. I went to uh, Boise, Idaho, short season. You were with the Cubs? I was with the Cubs. Got drafted by the Cubs. I show up. Like, I sign right away. Short season hasn't started yet. And uh, we're, like, meet the team, kind of. Mm -hmm. And the pitching coach is like, okay, uh, starter reliever. And he goes, no, you're this body? That's a reliever. You're not going to be able to carry 200 innings a season. And so I was a reliever for the first time as soon as I got to pro ball. And so were I was you like, pissed? 
a little bit. I was a little bit hurt, but uh, you do what you're told, employee. And I learned and adapted and and got to the bullpen life and hanging out with my teammates down there. I, I started to embrace it, and I enjoyed it. You know what else you did? You proved them wrong by showing what kind of strength you could build in that body. <laughs> I still, at 38, I have a what they call a projectable body. <laughs> yeah. I will Once puberty hits, I will fill out, I promise. <laughs> Maddie, can you grab me a water, please, buddy? Oh, yeah. I don't know if there's one over there. Is there one over there? Uh, right. We're looking. Oh, top shelf. Top shelf. Oh, yes. Good man. This is the first time you're actually having a high quality H2O on this trip. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. It's the first time he's mixed one, one in. one in on the fourth day. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway, so, I think we're good. yeah. So once I, once I kind of, I embraced it fairly like quickly and I just fell in love with the process. It, lacing your cleats up every day. You know, you talked about meant like worry about sleep. I'm the same way. And so. Mm-hmm. You have too much downtime as a starter, and so having to be ready every day kind of just helped my life approach because I didn't have time to think about stuff. Correct. So, you know, we have Trevor May on the Chris Rose rotation, and, you know, he talks about having to have such a short memory. But there are times where you guys, you know inevitably over a six-month season, you're going to have a week where it looks like you've never thrown a baseball. <laughs> oh, that, oh, my goodness, yes. Yeah, there's, there's stretches where you just – trying there's the best. more there's more of those stretches than when you feel good for me in my i remember two distinct periods in my career where i was absolutely locked and it was the majority of 2007 and a lot of 2017 so 10 years apart oh my god yeah in between that there's been so many th- times where i'm like i've lost it like i am there was one period of about a month where I knew that I was relying on the fact that I used to have a good slider. My slider was so bad that guys would see spin and just expect it to break and it just never did. And I relied on that for a month. I still had a pretty good sinker, but I had nothing else to go with it. That's what my career was. It was battling through <laughs> That's what it finding is. Which, pitcher, which pitch I can get the most out of on any given day. Yeah, For me, the biggest struggle I ever had was the whole 2018 season. I just couldn't figure out feel for any particular stretch like every time I would go out there I'm searching for something always trying it was a it was a trying year for many reasons um as a met if you recall look back on that season uh there was a lot of things going on and I just couldn't find my groove it was a rough season for me and so but you never feel a hundred percent when you're when you're a reliever you're you're trying to battle and that's what it is it's so the two best things about being a reliever the two best abilities they always say Number one is availability, so making sure that you are capable of going out there all the time, every day. You know, he was a – how many appearances was your high? 87. 87. Oh so I'm not even there. I'm at like 78. And so you're ready every day. And then even the games that you don't get in, you're probably warming up once or twice every game. Mm-hmm. And then the other ability is reliability. And so you want to be consistent. When the, when the phone rings, the manager calls you into the game, you want to give them what you are consistently. They want to be able to be reliant on you. Whether you're not, you're not going to be. I'm not going to give you Mariano Rivera, but I'm also not going to give you, you know, a terrible. So Some you're not going to get this. It's not, yeah, yeah, like okay. a guy, like a, a steady guy. You're you're going to give consistent performance, and yeah. so that's that's all you try to do. And if you're 75 percent, your arms sore, you can still work your way to that. Hey everyone, Jolly Olive here, here to tell you about DraftKings Sportsbook. If you're a college basketball fan, you should definitely join in on the action on the court during the biggest tournament of the year with the DraftKings Sportsbook. Turn your team's victory into your own big win. New customers can bet $5 on any team to win and get $200 in free bets if they do. It's that simple. If they win you win. If your sportsbook isn't available in your state yet, you can still join in on the College Hoops action with the DraftKings pool. Everyone can play free all March long for a shot at a share of over $250,000 in prices. Simply join a pool and answer questions like who will make it to the next round and who will hit the most three-pointers, then track your results. So make sure you download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use the promo code ROSE Bet $5 on any College Hoops team to win and get $200 in free bets if they do. If they win, you win with promo code ROSE this week at DraftKings Sportsbook. Age 21 or over, restrictions apply, and see the show notes for details. Was there ever a time where you got the baseball, you are out on the mound, and you're like, shit, I I have no idea what's going on here? 
I this was there was a moment in AAA. So Anthony Recker, who is doing kind of the same thing we are. I played with him and coming up in the A's. Played with him in New York. Um, he's my catcher, and I was in Sacramento, uh, and I was about to get a save, and I was like, you know, I had some big league time and up and down, and I like didn't know what a fastball felt like in my hand. I was like, this doesn't feel right. And so I called him out. We had like two outs. And he goes, what's going on? I was like, what does my fastball grip look like? <laughs> and he goes, a four-seamer? And he goes like that. And I was like, okay. Because it just it completely You got gone. locked. I got locked. And then I, it was right back. I threw one pitch, and I was like, oh, yeah. But for 35 seconds, I was like, I have no idea what a fastball is. I have never, ever had it was that happen wild. before in my life. Yeah. So Closest was, I've got. Go ahead. Keep That's going. like close to the yips, you yeah. know, the guy, yeah, the, the unspeakables. That was almost there, and then it, it, it went away. It was wild. S- similar, but slightly different. I got called up. Uh, I was with the Dodgers, and I got called up. We're in Colorado was the, where, where I got called up to. And to, got to <laughs> Perfect. The first time. Yeah, Love great. It. So I was used to – we must have been somewhere where there was some humid- humidity, and, and I was able to get a grip on the ball. And I, we're in, I'm warming up in Colorado, and I'm warming up on the right-hand side bullpen, and I'm throwing my slider into the bushes. And yeah. I'm like, okay, I'll move over and I'll make an adjustment. So I jumped on the other mound to try and make an adjustment and still continued to throw my slider into the bushes <laughs> over there. And I'm like, what am I going to do? And I was able to throw my, my sinker okay, but but yeah, there was times like that where I'm like, I've got nothing else but my sinker. And I go out there with nothing but a sinker. But you, they, you get through it. Yep. You somehow get through and it. And the next day you're like, oh yeah, that's right. right. What is the best part about being in the bullpen? The guys for me, yeah. Like uh, as as apart from the baseball, it's the the camaraderie that you get because we're isolated on this little island, mm-hmm. and we're always with each other. Like we're always by ourselves during the games, and so it's a different world out there. Sometimes the the dugout, you like when you come in after the the your outing and you're sitting in the dugout, it's a little stuffy because your manager's there, the cameras are always pointed in there, and so guys are a little bit more professional. But when we're in the bullpen, <laughs> we're in our own world, we're animals in a cage out there. It's yeah. it's it's that that camaraderie. There's no other position that has goes through the same thing we do, and yeah. so that's that's what I miss being retired most, and that's what it means to be in the bullpen. Really, you still get it in the clubhouse to a degree, but there's a different there's a different level of 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 a relationship, I guess. Once you're out there, you sit there for 162 games a year together. <laughs> Just talking about nonsense for five innings. You get to know the ins and outs of your your teammates like no one else can. And you just tell stories and you do hypotheticals and you just you just constantly come in because you can't just sit there and watch the game, especially innings one, two, three. Now someone gets hurt and you bounce into action, but most of the nights it's five innings. You're sitting there by yourself like, oh, we know we're not gonna do much. Maybe you'll start stretching around the fourth, but you've got three innings. So what you. is it? Games, talking shit? All the talking about sto- what is it? I've played I've played uh, versions of bocce ball with 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 the Rosenberg and and baseballs. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a good one. The, um, try to get it from the mound, see who can get it to stop on the plate. Right, you, you get like a running tally of you yep. know a dollar a day or whatever until somebody lands on it furthest away adds a five, whatever the case may be. Someone has to bring out tri- we had a, uh, a season where one person had to bring out trivia, trivia every day, and then the next season someone had to bring out top ten lists. What are the top ten all time ranking movies by sales in America? Yep. Bang bang, and you just go around the table. You get so, one answer each, and you keep going around until, and then the fifth inning rolls around. And you actually got to switch on. <laughs> Sometimes you have a, a guy that loves riddles in your group, and then you're on a riddle kick for like fifteen days, and you go through that. Yep, it's 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 all, and you get philosophical and deep. And I'm more of like um, a, a deeper question kind of guy. So if it's like my turn to engage everybody. I'll be like, what's your favorite Tom Hanks movies? And you'll get into that. And then you'll go like, you know, what are you, what do you think of when you die? What do you think happens? Or, and we'll go religion. Oh we'll, you'll, you'll either stay super surface and, and silly, or you'll get like way deeper than you ever thought you would. Mm-hmm. And, it, and it's a mix of everything. Cause you're, we're like family out there. We're, we're by ourselves for so long. Who is the best personality of anybody you had out there? Cause I'm sure. Wow. Yeah, you you want to pick one? Well, it's probably you, Moylan. Uh, if if I were to ask a lot of your teammates, um, I, I look. I'm confident to say that a lot of people would say me. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good answer. I, not many would say me. I don't. Think. I also was in a bullpen with Brian Wilson, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, who you, you know well, Rosie. I know very well as well. Um, and I mean, he's he's a character, obviously. Um, but how was, was he during games, though? 
he was he was fine. He was in the he was usually getting ready in the he was getting himself prepared because it was at the end, so it was he was kind of just doing a lot of arm care and, and making sure that he was able to go out there and compete. So but would he shoot the shit with you guys? It was beforehand that it would be the shoot and shit. Yeah. It like in the club so this is what's crazy. We had a good relationship, but a lot of it was in the clubhouse rather than in the bullpen. Gotcha. So um but as far as bullpen characters go, I mean Eric O'Flaherty is an underrated personality. Oh, I agree. I play with him as well. Yeah. Everybody he, loves him. He is absolutely the best value there is in a bullpen. What I, mate, why? Driest, sense of humor, gets everything, willing to try and do anything for a laugh. He ate a uh, – <laughs> we went out to Shula's Steak Restaurant in Orlando, I think it is, uh, or maybe we were somewhere else. Anyway, there was a challenge steak on the menu, and Brian McCann was like, you can't do that. And he said – "I." Can do anything, so <laughs> he basically sat. I think it was a seventy-two ounce steak. It was. What? It was. I have photos of it on my phone. I'll find it somewhere and I'll send it to you. But it was. I have. I have my hand in the photo for perspective. For perspective. <laughs> it was massive, Banana for and scale. he just sat there and ate the whole thing. <laughs> uh, just because somebody said he couldn't. Just because someone said he couldn't. I'd say for me, I'm gonna. I haven't dove back into my career quite that deep, but. Mm -hmm. One that stood out recently was Darren O'Day. Mm. Darren O'Day is old I school. Concur. Darren O'Day is a character uh, in a good way. He, he's going to keep the young guys in line, but he also has silly games that he plays, and and there's rules. Can I? Can you think I'm going to share? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how how deep I could go, but there's a rule about deep uh, about farts. Okay, and you you can't leave. You have to stew in it. What? <laughs> Wait. So. It, yeah. In your own Is gas? Is this a bad idea? Everyone has to stew in your gas. <laughs> in your gas. So if he's like, don't. So like a crop dust? He's, it's like, yeah, don't. It's don't not a crop dust alone. because everyone's like, oh, crop dust. Oh, oh. And they're like, oh, that's terrible. He's like, like no, don't hey, don't shame don't me leave. about my, my body. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, don't shame me. This is this is who I am. You're going to make me feel bad and walk away? Especially the young guys. At my point, I was with him. I'm an old man. I'm like, I'm not I'm not sitting around in your farts, man. I'm going to go outside. But the younger guys would be like, oh, fucking Darren O'Day. Tell me <laughs> I got to sit in his farts, I guess. Farts. <laughs> yeah, he's old school like that. Hilarious, man. Yeah, that's a good one. Really good one. And Neat. also, oh, this I forgot this. When he was with Texas and I was with Oakland, I, we, we do all these. I have the weirdest like special talents. I showed you my weird eye thing. Yeah, your weird eye thing. I also, <laughs> really I also am an Olympic level race walker. Like no I could, I, what? I am name, walker. Name one. I don't know name any of them. Kerry but, Saxby. Okay. Who? This is <laughs> a weird that name. Up. This is a weird Kerry Aussie Saxby. thing. Look it up. She She's was Australian. A, she was an Australian <laughs> speed walker. <laughs> That's impossible. That's the first girl you ever made out with. No That's chance. Is. It is an Australian speed walker. And I think she was disqualified in the Olympics because she got into a, a trot. And so look, I mean, he's looking this up right now. But there, here's the story for Darren she O'Day. She is a real – okay, I'm impressed. She's I real. don't know anybody. But Darren O'Day apparently did the same thing from Texas, and Texas and Oakland are in the same division. So he comes to the Coliseum, and he literally challenges me. He's like, I heard you're good at speed walking. Let's have a race. And we tried to do the race around the whole uh, warning track, and in the Coliseum, that's like eight miles, I think. I got news for you. <laughs> I'm a better speed walker than I you. dusted him. I'm like, better, he I'm stopped. Better, I'm a better speed walker than you. We'll see. I got to get these old hips loose. 100% I'm better speed walker than you. <laughs> I'm going to change my shoes. We'll get it going. We'll I knew who Kerry <laughs> Saxby was. You don't think I've watched the, the ultimate speed? I've watched you a lot wa of speed walking. I watch a lot of NBA in basketball. The I'm not it's a, I'm not a dunk from the, oh, from the free throw line. Done. But, but where we'll do we draw the line between somebody who's running and... You can't get off the ground. You can't have both of your feet. You can't have one foot you can, <laughs> you know, what you, you have to scuff. Have you have to scuff the whole way. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. One That's, foot has to be on the ground the whole time. Yeah. You so can't you can't be in the you can't air. You can't be in the air at, at any given point. And you, can I get? I'll give you a demonstration of what a speed walker looks like because you can get it's into the, the funniest rhythm thing. It's the from there to there. I'll show the you exactly what it looks hips. like at some point. I do it just to make my teammates laugh because exactly. it looks ridiculous. Exactly. And there and I did and it's uh, the arm wiggles as well because it's all about. <laughs> I swear. So we did a. We were in A's camp and they were doing like our timed like drills. And I'm not trying to break any land speed records. I can't run the ball to the plate. <laughs> and so I'm, I did. I, we were racing, and I almost beat one of our heavier guys in a, in a like a 20 was the yard. Guy? I'm not going to name his who name. Was Come the on, who was the No shot. What, what, what team? So we, Let us guess. No. Let us guess. Uh, no. What team and was so it? We, Big and, leaguer? I'm, no, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to do that. And so I literally like pretended. I didn't tell anybody I was going to do it. 
and I did it, and I did it like Forrest Gump style, to where it went through the line, and then <laughs> I, just I, go, I went all the way back. through like center field. <laughs> <laughs> they lose it. Right. They lost it. So I just I do it because I want to make my teammates laugh. Oh, we God. are the same person. <laughs> I swear. We, er, we met this, for the first time here. Yeah. We on this trip. On this yes. trip. We yeah. met for the first time, and it was like yeah. old old friends. We actually went and got necklaces where we got those hearts that we break them in. <laughs> yes, yeah, friends app. forever. Oh, yeah, I love yeah. it. Put a matching yeah. together. Yeah, we we're going to go. My la- my sure. lost matching soul. tattoos. <laughs> Did you <laughs> ever um, talk shit to fans out there? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. What would you say? I try and like, it's really hard because they have the they have the ability of looking you up and seeing your personal details mm-hmm. and being able to formulate that into an absolutely perfect mm-hmm. ribbing. And I'm turning around based on what I'm seeing in five seconds, and now you can't really pick on people's looks. So it's like you're really stuck with what you can say. I, I disagree. Uh, okay. Everybody, everybody <laughs> feels that they Excellent. can make fun of skinny people because we don't have feelings. Correct. So you it's do. still it's still in fashion. <laughs> it's in in today's culture, making fun of skinny people is still okay. You're because, right. It is. Yeah, and uh, apparently that'll be gone at some point because we do have feelings. Um, but I've heard all of the skinny jokes by times a million. Nobody said anything original. But if you do, I will acknowledge you. Yeah. I'll be like, that shit was funny. Do you yeah. remember one that was? Uh, somebody, so, uh, I couldn't remember. I, I don't remember any individual one that was like stood out to me. I, had I prepared better for you, Chris, That's I, okay. I feel apologize. That's okay. But it's very, it's very rare. But for the most part, I wouldn't talk shit back to, the, back to him. I'll humanize them. And I'll be like, look, hey, man. Yeah, I'm just trying to do my job. What, what What's going on? Are you mad at me? Did I do something? Oh, nice. And usually they're like, oh, man, sorry. Yeah, like, kill them with kindness. Or I'll just walk up to them and, you know, the bullpen is awesome because of the fan interaction. Some of the ballparks, like being Philly. in the Coliseum. Philly. With Philly. Some of them, like being around super close to where I could reach out and touch. The Coliseum, they're right behind us. And so you develop relationships with the regulars, the the season ticket holders out there. And so if somebody's talking shit that close and you walk up to them and you're like, what was that? Hmm. They change their tone really quick, and they don't. They're like, "Whoa," you know. Mm-hmm. And so it's it's different. And I I would just try to be like, "Look, I'm a person. My name's Jerry. Like, what's your name, man?" And they're like, <laughs> "No, I Jerry. I preferred it. I preferred yelling at you when you're yeah. just a thing on right. the field." So Philly was the worst. Philly was the worst. For me. I and loved I, it, and I because Philly changed their dugouts because of the amount of interaction. Right, they they had to swap dugouts, yeah, right? Yeah. The amount of interaction Philly fans was doing to their own bullpen. Imagine how it is with us up there. So they just abuse you. They just go and it was some of it's pretty good. One guy absolutely dominated me about how I used to be a pharmaceutical rep. And that's on YouTube. So if you guys want to look that up, it's it's I'm, I will on be YouTube. Looking it up. Um that was a good one. I came out and tried to say something but I had nothing quick. I was young, twenty eight, real young. <laughs> Now it's more about just the quick pop back with something. You just got to. What was he doing about a pharmaceutical rep? Because that's what my what my job was before. Yeah, but I mean, you're awful. It's like you used to be a pharma. Talking about how the Braves have had to stoop pretty low to the bottom no. of the barrel to go to pharmaceutical to get a drug rep. dealer in. Correct. Yeah. No. I remember one. I was in uh, my first time ever backing up a big league game in spring training. I was with the Cubs. We're on the road in San Francisco. Like Barry Bonds is playing left field, so I'm like watching him from the bullpen. Uh, and they're like, all right, the fir- the starter got into the second inning. So, Blev, you're not going to pitch. Do you want to throw a bullpen? So I'm throwing a bullpen at, like, the bottom of the second. <laughs> and I'm warming up. I'm like, I'm just getting my work in. And the fans are like, oh, you're never going to make it. You're throwing a bullpen in the bottom of the second? <laughs> and I turn around. I'm like, I know, man. I don't have my name on this jersey. It's number 87. <laughs> yeah. I know. I'm just trying to get my work in. He goes, oh, okay, good luck, dude. I was like, thanks, buddy. What about the fact that you can kind of determine your chances of making the team the minute you walk into spring training and see where your locker is? Yeah, you're like, uh, okay. You know where I was the first year of spring training? Where? Right next to the shitters. (laughs) Me and Phil Stockman literally had everybody walk past us in the nude to go to the showers and the shitters. That's what we were sitting in Disney. "Ah, I'm going to, that's a, probably going to struggle here. It's an uphill battle. Yeah, I might not make this one. Number 96. All right, before we move on to a few extra topics, um, Running out of the bullpen when there's a fight. Mm-hmm. Is there a protocol? Is there a specific order? Is it? Are you guys sprinters out of there? Are you guys more back of the pack? Uh, it depends on the situation. There's been <laughs> two that I remember distinctly from this. Uh, one in Baltimore where you know Baltimore. I don't know how long the cobblestones have been there, but there's cobblestones, and we're up top again. You walk down cobblestones in baseball spikes 
to the gate that swings inward that we discovered, not outward. <laughs> so there's a bunch of us all trying to walk down, almost like a lady walking in heels at the end yeah. of the night downhill. Yeah. And then the gate opens. So we all pile in expecting the gate to open forward and then it opens back. So we're all just kind of <laughs> compressed and just standing there like, hey man, what's up? Are you all right? And then the, the gate finally opens and we all go sprinting in. So there was that one. And then there was a, another good one where uh, Ian Kennedy hit Granky in the head. Oh, yeah. And I was with the Dodgers then. And that was a, that was like, a, you can't do that. That was more of a, I got to get out there quickly and, and see what see what I can do. So what do you do when you get out there? Do you? That was actually a good one. We uh Benches cleared out. The whole teams were out. There was a couple of punches thrown. Um, there was coaches and, and players together. And I was basically trying to be a peacekeeper. Puig got in the action and was trying oh, to get God. crazy. So it was like controlling him at the same time as well as trying to stop everyone from pushing forward. It was it was a pretty decent fight without seeing anybody get injured. Uh, my, so here's a great story. My debut, my second day in the big leagues, Vincente Padilla for the Texas Rangers oh, is yes. playing against the A's. He Nick was a black belt in something. Padilla? Yeah. Apparently, I heard he was a black in- belt in just being a dick. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's that the might, gist that of that. That, <laughs> that might know. have been it. <laughs> that might have been it. Yeah. But, so I had just gotten traded over to the A's from the Cubs in Double A, and then made my way to that September. Second day in the big leagues. I literally know no one on my own team. I didn't, I've never met him. So I'm sitting in the bullpen. It's the bottom of the first inning. Swisher's leading off. Padilla. What up, bro? Wiz is 97 right behind him at like a 2-0 count or a 1-1 count. And Swisher looks at him, kind of points to him, and I, all right, that was kind of weird. And so we're on the field. The Coliseum has bullpens on the field. And I'm like, oh, shit. And I see like the other guys start to do this. And the veterans haven't even come down yet, so I don't know who to ask to, to do what. Right. Second, 99, right behind his head. Swisher walks out like, what's going on, bro? And Padilla says, uh, the third one, right in the back. Swisher runs out. Everybody runs. I'm running out. I'm like, oh, my God. I don't know anybody. Uh, Jack Hanahan, I see him jump over the pile. Swisher goes in to, like, try to scoop him. It was a legit fight. Punches are thrown. It was wild. I I get there. I don't know anybody on either team. <laughs> I see a guy that I know because I came up and playing against him. And I'm like, dude, he's for the Rangers. I'm like, the big leagues is awesome. <laughs> and we're both like holding each other. I was like, don't punch me in the face. And he's like, all right. And we're just kind of like hugging each other like congratulations at the same time. But There's that was like so my much first. Theater. I made my day, my debut later that game. And it was like a, oh, an man. adrenaline dump Anticlimax, beforehand. Yeah. yeah, but it was awesome. And then. I was like, the big leagues is insane because I had never been a part of any benches clearing bra until I get to the big leagues. Did either of you ever get charged? No. They, I mean, they saw this. That's they I'm didn't saying. want any part of it? Mm-hmm. No. Did you? No, never. No. no. Okay. Interesting stuff. Uh, I want to talk to you guys about your teams um, that, that you guys are focused on, obviously, with Shea Station and the New York Mets and, of course, Pete. You still cover the world champion in Atlanta Braves, so there's been a lot of movement uh, with both those teams over the last few weeks, months, and uh, hours as well. But first, I want to tell you about uh, ED. Okay, it's an issue for you're not alone because actually more than half the men ages 40 to 70 deal with some form of erectile dysfunction. So, you know, it's your turn to step to the plate. We're all married. We all want our ladies to have a good time out there, that significant other in your life. But you know what? Some people have a tough time performing. That doesn't mean you go cower in the corner and you say, my sex life's over. That's not what it's about. It's about getting the proper treatment and the proper help. And that's why it is time right now to go get Roman ready. So GetRoman.com. Use the code word ROSE. You'll talk to a U.S. licensed healthcare professional. You're going to get 15 bucks off your first month of treatment. The cool thing about this, sometimes it's tough for us guys to talk about ED. So you don't want to go to your doctor's office, have a face-to-face conversation. You don't have to do that. You pick up the phone. They call you. Uh, they prescribe treatment. If medication's involved, it'll get to your house within a couple of days. So once again, it is all about GetRoman.com slash Rose. You're going to get 15 bucks off the first month of treatment. You will be a happy camper, and you will bring a smile to that someone special that is in your life. So go take care of business right now. We get back to the business of baseball. I want to talk to you about the New York Mets here because they have – Yeah, bro. Nice transition, by the way. Well done. Thank you very much. Class. Uh, that's, what, that's what we do that's around what you here. Do. Yeah. New York Mets, 
Uh, most impressive offseason, I think, of any team out there. What? What's that? Oh, what was, was just, that? I was just going to open up my water. Did you? What? What happened? It, it sounded mousy over there. <laughs> I don't know. Was, you don't? You don't think so? No, I don't think so. Not yet. I mean, as far as yes, on paper, back, and back, money spent. Back, that's Scherzer, all I can. Money Starling spent. Mart, money spent. But yeah. I think they were all good moves, smart moves. Yeah, like they, they you feel like the smart Braves moves. have done no, better were, by getting rid of their franchise player. No, what I'm saying is when you look at it, the um, what. You guys have spent a lot of money, but we're getting, we're getting some things back as well. That that oh yeah no no, no I'm won't not, get talked about. I, I understand that, but that's but there's that's, a lot of people that are pushing the Mets. Let, like let the me Mets have are, my moment. The Mets are, are, are by far and away the best team in the NL East. I didn't say that. What I did say is that I'm, they I had. Say you did, but I'm saying a lot of people are trying to push that now. Well, you know they are uh, the gambling odds-on favorite in the National League Good. as of right now, as of the taping of this show. The, well, the Braves have been underappreciated. Well, they won five straight years. Right. Yeah. They, they get picked to finish third, fourth every, every year. So, yeah. And they weren't picked to advance out of the first round a year ago. They had the fewest wins of any of the 10 teams that were in the playoffs. They were missing Soroka, Acuna, Ozuna. Like, yeah, I get it. <sighs> right. Um, but let me, we're talking about the Mets, man. But, it's true. It, but it's not always a positive question here because they have been set up here. If they don't get it done, then what do we say? Like, this team has got to. Not even making it in the top six of the National League is good enough. This team is built to win the World Series, is it not? Yes, it, that is uh, the aspirations of the New York Mets is to win the World Series. Anything less, you can talk about success, but having the opportunity to win the World Series year in, year out was Stevie Cohen's mantra. That's what he wanted, and we're there. You have the, uh, like On paper, the team looks capable of winning the World Series. Do you think that last, because last year it sounded like there were some serious rumblings about some off field issues that guys didn't get along and all that stuff. And we don't know, like we weren't in the clubhouse. People, you know, media members weren't in the clubhouse. Broadcasters weren't in the clubhouse. We don't know. Is that why Buck Showalter is here? And will that make an enormous difference? I don't think, yes, that is why Buck Showalter is here. It's because it's Louis Rojas is a great baseball mind. He was given the worst possible scenario to start a managerial yes. career. That's he got a dysfunctional team to start with, and then you had the pandemic, mm -hmm. and then you had DeGrom go out. Like He had a lot stacked against him. Uh, the Mets lost him. The Yankees are better for having him. It's not his fault, but the Mets didn't want to go to another first-time manager, and they brought in a guy like Buck Showalter, who is... A great baseball mind. That's exactly a guy that is too. adapted, mm -hmm. has seen almost everything that the the league is going to be able to throw at him, mm -hmm. and he has a great sense of humor. He's a great baseball mind, and it's going to help because no matter what, he's going to stand in front of that podium. He's going to deflect everything away from the players. He's going to soak it all up. He's got the 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 personality to thrive in New York as because he's done it in the past. He will make a big difference, mostly off the field stuff. He'll let the guys on the field take care of that stuff, put them in the best most successful or most position to be successful and then do everything on uh, off the field that he can to make sure it doesn't get to them. I didn't have an appreciation of what Buck or who Buck was because obviously him being in the dugout across, you get a sense, but until I watched him on television and heard him speak regularly mm -hmm. about baseball, I think he's going to make a huge difference over there. I think his his impact, his respect level. The minute he walks in there, players will show him the respect. Now he's got to keep earning that respect by the what he does and the way that he treats players. But I think he's going to fit in perfectly in New York, as you said. I think I can make the point that the Mets, may, definitely not the brand, but just the baseball team and the organization, the way it's constructed right now, is infinitely more interesting than the New York Yankees. Do you agree or disagree? Oh, wow. Starting with ownership, I think the yeah, owner is yeah. fascinating, whether you like him or you don't. If you're going to go and put them in categories, right? I'm going to go tick to the Mets' ownership. Yeah. What's right? next? Agreed. Roster? Fr front office and manager? I mean... I like Booney. I do, too. And I like Buck Showalter. That's a tie. Maybe. Okay, that's a push? Yep. yep. And I'll take the front office as a tie push, too, because Cashman has done it for, for years, yeah. won championships. Epler's on his way up. It's exciting. Well, we think. We yeah, well, we, you know, he's trying, but it's also exciting, you're, yeah. you're, what you talked yeah, about. Yeah, but he also doesn't have much of a personality. Cashman there, at least, is 
is a guy who's constantly in front of the camera. You know who he is. He's been in this job for 25 years. I think He's, Jerry's trying to get a job with the Mets, so Jerry can't say that. <laughs> right, so Jerry we'll can't, go sorry, I find it interesting. <laughs> I think it's equally interesting. <laughs> okay, and then uh, rosters. I, that's that, I, that's I, You cannot go anywhere but the Mets. Josh Donaldson's just been added. That's true. There is at least... There's a little thump being, being added. Being in this... Yankees starting Yankees pitching. House. Yankees starting pitching. It's questionable at the moment. Cole. The rosters don't stack up. I would just wise. say, in like interesting, interesting wise, wise. I'm, I'm not talking. I'm yeah, not even like, necessarily talking about. It's talent. all. It's all Mets for it, me. It because certainly it, sparks my interest because of what the Braves are going to have to do to get to the playoffs. And the this Yankees year. make moves. They're going to have like when the when Gary Sanchez got traded. Like this house is like. What is going on? Mm-hmm. We don't know what to do. It's interesting because you're like, this can't be it. Mm-hmm. But the Mets have made moves where you're like, this is making our team better. Yeah. The roster is full of superstars, superstars. Yeah. And that has to like account for a lot of it. Yeah, they have four superstars. They have two in the starting rotation, one at shortstop and one at first base. Yep. Yeah. And they have one on the rise in Chris Bassett. And they just signed... Starling Marte. Yeah, but Cannon. those guys aren't superstars. Not superstars. No, no, no. They're really good players. Superstars, yeah, yeah. I'm right. talking about like legit, like got b- generational, either, you know, and yeah. big personalities, right? Yeah. I mean, Scherzer's loud. I mean, he's in all over the dugout. Lindor, we know that you know he's flashy, he's fun, big smile. Pete Alonso's the big old teddy bear that mashes homers. So, a lot going on there. I want to see Lindor get back to the Cleveland Lindor. Totally. I think that's because I think that's where we're headed right now. If if he has a season like I saw him have when I was in Kansas City facing him so many times in Cleveland, it's going to be really tough for the Bravos. Yeah. It's it's almost like it's another free agent addition because I agree with you. They have not seen the right one. No chance. Correct. He still put up a gold glove cal- He should have won a gold glove, I think. You know, Brandon Crawford had a great season, but the you know, defensive runs saved, outs above average. I watched him, his range to the left, to the right. He never took what he did at the plate to the field because he played stellar yeah. defense. Is still. he as good as Anderson Simmons? Um, he's more consistent. Anderson Simmons did play. He made plays that I've never seen made. Can but right now, obviously Simmons is older. Sure, but I'm I what like- I said is is I think. Francisco Lindor's everyday play is better than Simmons' wow. everyday play. Okay. Let's get to the champs here. Let's. There's a report that the Braves did not tell Freddie Freeman that they were making the Olsen trade. Wow. If that's true, is that wrong, or does it not matter because it's business? Oh, man. I don't really know. Um, I've never been in a situation where I've even been offered anything other than a minor league deal. So I don't know how I would feel in that situation. Um, he, he's obviously made a decision not to accept their offer. Right. So I think from that point, it's it's done. They have the freedom to... They don't have to tell them every move that they're going to make from now until he signs somewhere. Or do they? I I don't know. Because I, there, the, is there a chance it, that he still signs back? It makes me sad that he is not going makes, to be he, an Atlanta Brave. 100%. Apart from business, whether... Matt Olson is a great baseball player, and I it could Which be is. the right move. Matt Olson is legitimately a great player. And you player. showed that to me just he is, 20 he minutes is, ago. He is Freddie Freeman... In the minus American four years. Minus four years. Yeah. Like he's going to, he is all. He's unreal. Like the Braves fans are going to love him. It's going to be a great addition. But it doesn't. You can't. You can't. Uh, uh, you can also appreciate Matt Olson, but be really upset for Freddie Freeman not wearing a Braves uniform. Correct. I don't care what it takes. I would prefer that Freddie Freeman be a, a Brave for the rest of his life. Right. And this is where the whole. It's just a kid's game thing yep. gets frustrating because when you look at it like this, if it was just a kid's game, the romantic side of the Braves would have gone, Freddie will give you whatever you want. Look at what you've done for us over the course of – you were stayed face. through the rebuild. Everybody wears five jerseys. You got us to a – you won an MVP. You got us to a World Series. You carried this team for – you've been the guy for 10 years. There's going to be some heartbroken fans, in, including me. I mean, I'm going to miss seeing, not seeing him play first base every day. But at the same time, it's hard for me as an analyst to look at this and go, Braves got a bad deal because they didn't. They've they now did got Olsen, Acuna, Albies, Soroka, Ian Anderson, Max Freed locked up until at least 2026, all those guys. So it's, it, it's really tough for me to, to 
not be excited about the and future. in the prime of their career and in the prime of their career. You can you That's can be key. happy. You can be happy for the team. Yeah. And also be upset for Freddie and the franchise because yep. it's a travesty that he's not going to be a brave. in a brave. Uh, Matt Olson, you might win another go back to back this year, but and it would still be like what could have been Freddie. I think it's an important point to make that he was offered something. Correct. From, from what I understand, the choice was there to sign. Was it fair? Was it a fair offer? I will never know because I'll never know what it what it was unless it comes out. Mm-hmm. But. It was an offer, so there was a decision made that he decided that he, that wasn't enough. And that's and okay. They also and decide okay. that they, he didn't. They didn't want to meet where he was. Right. Yeah. I it's will say this: ways. in one thing, in covering this sport in particular, is that when you are a lifelong whatever, Freddie Freeman could go O for the next a thousand if he had re-signed with the Atlanta Braves for whatever dollar figure they had put out there. Okay, that's a good point. And they'd still put up a statue. Mm-hmm. When he joins his new team, you know what he is. He's a contract. Yep. There is no goodwill. Every, everybody will know what a great guy he is from mm. the stories. But Albert Pujols was a pretty good in guy Anaheim. in St. Louis. Just yeah. And you know what thing. he is in Anaheim? Yeah. He's that guy that played in three playoff games, and his contract was so big it was a reason we couldn't add more dudes. Yep. But I also, I also I see that, but I also feel like we're looking at two very different players at different points of their career. I, I agree with you. Yeah. And... Yeah, I mean, you know, Albert started breaking down there. He started getting heavier he still had and bigger. Good years in yeah. Anaheim. He did have some good years. He never came no, close to not what even he's, close. No. Not 30, even close. He had thirty and a hundred. He's not the the fifty and one forty like he was. And, and a guy who was hitting three forty seven yeah, or exactly. whatever. Like he was that never, guy. The, the, you the, faced that guy, didn't yeah, you? A bunch of times. Yeah, he was a machine. He was. His nickname was the machine. He right. was a machine. He's and, just but then, Albert. if you were to go and ask Angel fans, what's the first thing you think of with Albert Pujols? It's not bad contract. It's, yeah, yeah, it's exactly. the bad contract. Yeah, yeah, so uh, go ask Pablo Sandoval. Yep. They're still oh, yeah. working, wearing freaking panda heads in, in San, San Francisco. Francisco. But when he took the deal Boston. in Boston, it was terrible, and you could see how unhappy he was. Right. I look. I understand. So I, that's a that's a really good point. Look, is it the Andrew Jones uh, going to the Dodgers contract at the end? Like he got a couple more years at the end of his career as well. But they they say that's what's keeping him from out of the Hall of Fame right now is because of the downward spiral the in his career. And yeah. had he had that in, done that in the Braves uniform, would it have been forgotten because of all the memories they had? That's that's a really really great point. So how do you handle that if you're a fan base, right? Because Braves fans have been shitting all over the move because they're not. They don't watch Oakland until Oakland today, A's game. though. But until and, I feel like there's been a shift. I've been trying to get a read on it. It's fifty fifty. You do. You think it is? It, huh? it, it, it's fifty fifty. People are absolutely mad. A, a lot of the people that look at it from a little less of an emotional point are are, are looking at like, well, it's tough to be angry right now. Mm-hmm. Well, it's interesting because I think if you could, as a fan, back yourself up to when Freddie Freeman first became a big leaguer over a decade ago. And he said, okay, he's going to spend 11 years here and you're going to win a World Series. And then he's going to leave. Would you take it? Mm-hmm. You'd be Absolutely. like, of course, yep. you'd sign up for it. Correct. And that would be it. Yep. But now it's there's going to be a little bit of ill will. It's going to be some weird. People, it is going to be, be really weird. weird to see him in another uniform. I don't care which uniform it is. And it's going to be weird to see Matt Olson, man, in first base. I love Matt Olson as a person. As a player, I think he's incredible. I think it's a smart move, but I it'll agree. be weird not to see number five yeah. play totally. in first base. Is it also? Is it also? Does he deserve a chance to have another shot at a World Series with the team that he helped get to this point? Exactly. I mean, that's the thing is that he he went through the labor at least to see the baby. He he right? was a, he was a member of that team, not just in on the field production. Right. He helped decide. Decisions. You look at you look at like the guys' interviews now today. Like, no one else should wear five. Dansby said no one else should wear the number five. And they won't. Nobody will. Tyler Matzik was like, you think about Freddie Freeman. You think about the Atlanta Braves. You think about it's like it's, yeah. Do you think he's held in the same breath as a Chipper Jones? As an outsider, I I played one season with them. I think so. I think he's the, the next generation. Yeah. He, I think he's also a Hall of Fame talent. I think if you ask the guys that played with him through this time and the staff that was there with him through this time, I think that you're going to get 100% and it's, yes is the answer. But I think if you asked, I don't know that he's reached the level of the fan appreciation that Chipper has just yet. 
And I think that this is going to make it tough to, having, to get there. Having faced him way too many times, uh, yes. See, he's he's so I faced the two best hitters I've ever faced in my career, Ichiro and Freddie Freeman. And I think I'm, you know, I might think Freddie is the best because it used to be Ichiro hands down. Mm-hmm. Freddie, I could never figure out, and that <laughs> no I, one can no because it's so. It, so on top of that, he plays a Gold Glove caliber first base and first base is not third base but i think first base overall is underappreciated in today's game and he plays a beautiful first base he makes all of his infielders better and he he's a leader in on the plane flights in the clubhouse to the manager like he he's just a fabric of the atlanta braves and i'm sad like one of my favorite things about seeing the atlanta braves organization i was very i love seeing the superstars come back I got to see Andrew Jones all the time. Phil Necro came into the clubhouse. Tom Glavin would be on the radio. Um, this guy called a couple games. <laughs> uh, you know, Frank Hoor, like, they bring their guys in. Like, it's part of it. Hank Aaron. Like, they're, they're like a storied franchise that cares about their former players, that they all feel like they can come in at any point and be, like, welcomed in. There's going to be a weirdness now about Freddie Freeman. It just is uh, going to be strange. Glav went to the Mets. Our arch rivals and Glavins. Un- under different circumstances. Yeah, he was really toward the back end of his career. Yep. Yeah, it's that. hard for any of us to believe that Freddie Freeman's fallen off the wagon. He's not going Not drinking-wise, <laughs> falling off production-wise. <laughs> he's not going anywhere. He's, yeah. he's going to do what he's going right. to continue to do, and he's probably going to use this as motivation as well. So it's like it's... Yeah. It's. I think he's on par with Chipper. And again, I yeah. never played with Chipper. I played against Freddie too much, and I got to see it in firsthand. And it's you know, he is an ascended talent. Like you're, you're right. There's five jerseys everywhere. Yes. There's five jerseys. Everywhere. One of my favorite Acuna, videos is like him running around in Thanksgiving or uh, Halloween. Yes. Yeah, and he runs into a neighborhood. He's with his little boy, yep. yeah. and a kid is running by in a Freddie Freeman uniform, and yep. he stops and says, "Hey, are you dressed as me?" And they take that picture together, and it's just like he is Atlanta. He is the Braves. Like there they, aren't that many players left no. that are that way. Yep. Where if they were to move, you'd be like, "Okay, it's just part of the biz." But this is one that just feels like it. Just like if Buster Posey came out of retirement oh, and God, decided and to yeah, wear yeah, a no, different no. uniform, right? Like it's it's. That level to me, I don't know. I think yeah, but Freddie okay, might. But what, uh, so just because he played out to this point and got to free agency, does that like like what changes that that means means that all other guys that get to free agency has to have the right to go somewhere else? He does have the right. They he totally they, has. Maybe, the, yeah, both. So teams. yeah, but I'm just saying, like from a fan standpoint, they're going to look at that and they're going to and they're going to maybe blame him. For not they have the right to blame him as well because he they have a what's supposed to be or allegedly is a five year deal. And he wanted six years, and he's. They said we can't do that. He's making a choice, and they're making a yeah. choice. He is so, a free agent. It's a mutual decision. You can blame whoever you want to blame. You have every right to as a fan, but you can also just be upset that whatever happened, he's not wearing a Braves jersey. When correct? was the last time you saw a GM like Alex Anthopoulos openly Crying. weep? Yeah, yeah. You know, and he was limited for some stupid reason. He's not allowed to talk about free agents, like. Fuck that, by the yeah, way. Like, these dumb rules that we have. It, I don't it, know that rule. What's that rule? It's just tampering he, or yeah, something. Yeah, he, he wasn't allowed to talk about a guy out there that they have no intention of signing or something. Because Freddie's still a free agent, so there's weird uh, rules Because it can it. play into the decision. I guess, but team. whatever. It's so stupid. Okay, like, okay. But, you know, it was a touching moment. Yeah. It really was, because you don't hear that, because right. GMs are in there to find your replacement. They're, that's going to define Anthopolis in, in some instances. This decision he won, could. Yeah, well, he won a World Series. He got yeah, this amazing team. He's done a wonderful job. He's he's done a great job. And mm-hmm. getting Olsen is an unbelievable yeah. move. Yeah. But he understood that this is a weighty decision that's going to impact his legacy. Real quickly, um, you mentioned that the best players you ever faced were Freeman and Ichiro. Yes, those are my two. That's cool. You must have faced Ichiro a ton. I faced Ichiro. He was the guy because we were in the AL West together. Then he went to New York and then Miami. Then I came over to the NLE. So we faced each other a bunch. That guy was unbelievable. Um, Even when I would succeed and I would get him to roll over to second base, he did it on purpose because he knew he could beat him out because Mark Ellis had played back that day. Or he took a step back and he knew that he could do it. So he'd roll it over 
to second base on purpose because he was so fast. Or if I get behind 3-1, he would lace a ball into the left center gap. I, I got ahead and throw my curveball, that's my bread and butter, and he'll hit it off the bounce into a gap. Like, the guy was just unbelievable at his job. And then Freddie Freeman is a mixture. So I always had success against guys that tried to hit home runs all the time and never changed their approach because I knew if I executed what I was trying to do, they're not going to hurt me. I knew it's simple. But Freddie Freeman and Ichiro and guys like him, Freddie Freeman, was the he's the perfect encapsulation of a power guy that has incredible eye-hand coordination. He makes contact with everything. It doesn't matter. He doesn't have a weakness on a certain pitch. And his swing is so unorthodox that, <laughs> like, I couldn't make in-at-bat adjustments because if I could see that you were like, oh, he was late on that, or he's, I can tell he's looking for something, I, I did it my whole career because my stuff wasn't that great. I could read you mid-AB. I could never do that with Freddie, and it drove me nuts, mm. and it was always in my head because I, I was like, with that swing, I have no idea what you're doing. If you were late, if you were early, I'm just going to like pretend that I know what I'm doing, and I'm going to fake confidence and do what it could, but I had no idea how to get him out. So he's on that level. Best player you faced? Best player, best hitters I faced, probably Miguel Cabrera, but I had a bit of success against him. Toughest guy to get out for me was Zimmerman. We had battles right the way through, but we faced each other so much as well. But pick a right-handed hitter from in the National League. From Why do you think he had success against Mickey? Uh, I mean, when I say success, he only hit like 300 against me. So um, <laughs> And one homer. He got me on for a home run the last time I faced him. So uh, that's a win for me. One of the greatest hitters that we're, we're going to see. He's only 16, 17, maybe 13 away from... 3,000 right now, so I'm happy to, to say that I've been a few of those. And, and he is so much fun out there, dude. I, I Matt, never... Matt Holidays and those for those kinds of guys as well. Like I love, just love battling those those guys. For I never years. got to see Pujols in his prime, but I got to see Miguel Cabrera, and Miguel Cabrera is the best right-handed hitter I've ever seen mm. in person, like not even close, because the Pujols I got at the end of his career, I've seen some a lot of really good hitters, but Cabrera, his size, his power in that, like if he would have been in Yankee Stadium, and as prime, he would have hit 73 home runs. Like, he just could do yes. – he, he would set you up. Uh. He would swing at a pitch on purpose, bad, to make sure that you knew next time he, he's like, oh, you, yeah, you think I got – I don't have that. Mm -hmm. And then you'd throw it, and he's like, that's the one. Mm -hmm. And he would just laugh. Or, you know, you would throw a pitch that you'd never thrown before, and he would know you'd never throw that before. My buddy Ryan Cook, who was an all-star um, with the A's and then got hurt – uh, through a changeup they'd be working on to get Miggy, and Miggy swung and like looked up at him. After he goes, "What was that?" Like as he's swinging, it's like, <laughs> "Okay, now he remembered it." The guy's just an unbelievable hitter. That's pretty cool. All right, something we like to do here on the uh, Rose Rotation is spin the wheel of moderately interesting things. <laughs> I could not fit it in the overhead compartment, so um, actually, I forgot it back in Los <laughs> Angeles, so I didn't bring it. So I'm going to fictitiously spin it. Robbie, you can put the animation in right now. And, uh, yeah, uh, today it'll end on uh, First Ride or whatever the hell I call that thing. What was the first car you ever you ever had? My first car was a 1978 Chrysler Lancer that I paid $500 for that I bought off a buddy of mine named Jason Hewitt. I drove that for four months and never filled it with oil until the engine exploded on the freeway and I left it there. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. You really took it and ran. That was it. I just said, i got to go back to baseball, so I left it there. Mine was a 1985 Renault Alliance, and the car was about this big. It was a five-speed, and it was we painted it Pepsi can blue. Uh, Hold on. We? Out. Yes, my stepdad and I. How did you with, with the proper... spray with the spray? No, not with a proper anything. I bought this car for three hundred dollars. <laughs> it was a this, there's a couple easy stories. So uh, to put it in reverse, it was a stick shift. Didn't go into fifth gear ever. Uh, to get it into reverse, you had to pull the knob up and then put it into first. And it had a the horn was on the turn signal, uh, <laughs> and you would push it, and it was. <laughs> it was connected to the engine somehow, so the RPM also messed with the pitch. So it'd be like, you would rev the engine, and it'd be like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I remember uh, I was dating my girlfriend at the time in high school, and I like pulled into her driveway, to, and she came out, and I'm Is like, Is that code oh. for something, by the way? No, I picked her up oh, to okay. go to school, All right. and I pulled into her driveway, and she comes out and gets in the car, and I couldn't put it into reverse. <laughs> I was just like. Something? 
we're stuck. And so I was like, can you give it a little push? And so I had my girlfriend <laughs> push my car to get us going so I could go. Like it, it died. I didn't leave it on the highway, but it, it lasted a long time. It, it's eventually you couldn't get it into fourth gear or reverse ever again. So I had to like give it up. You want to hear the horror of car stories for me? Yes. I got my license. Uh, the day I got my license, my mom was like, well, here's the keys. You got, you know, off you go. And I decided to go meet my buddies at the mall, drive myself. I'm fine. I'll go. And it's the first time we drive on the left-hand side of the road. Uh First time I'd made a left turn into a left-hand side of the road. And there was a car waiting to come out and make a right. Mall parking lot, tight as it is. I came pulling in this way and decided to pull a left. And I didn't pull hard enough. And I just hit the front of a car like that. And rather than reversing, I just decided to, I kept going and almost ripped the whole side of her car off. I'm Your like, first oh, left-handed turn? First ever left-handed turn in a mall parking lot. Yes. I ripped the half a car off. Did you floor it and just keep going? No, I actually drove around the parking lot and found her and then, yeah, I had to. Sorry. Had How pissed was she? Uh, my, yes. Did she get that you were just a new driver? I or? had the P plates on. We have to show that we're new drivers in Australia. We have what? learner's smart. plates. Really? Which are, which are an L plate and permit plates, which means you're under three three years probation, which is a... We need to do that, I Did think. you get a year of probation added? No, I, <laughs> I just paid and f- fixed the car, but it was just, it was a nightmare. Like, let's talk about confidence crushing. Was your mom pissed? She was wonderful. No, she wasn't pissed. Okay. All right. Wow. Guys, it was great hanging out with you. Mm. Thanks this for making awesome. some time. Of course. Our pleasure. That's what we're here for. It. it was nice that you finally drank something other than... Yeah, well, I figured I'd feel like... Not much thing. alcohol content in it. It's my last night tonight, so i gotta, I got to... Gotta... Let's hydrate. Yeah. Try to get back to center, maybe. Uh, guys, we look forward to hearing you on uh, Farm to Fame and on Shea Station. Yes, sir. Make sure you download those wherever you download your podcast. I am Chris Rose. We will see you next time here on the Chris Rose Rotation, a production of John Boy Media and presented to you by SeatGeek.